ultimate question of Mars, though, is will there be human settlements on the planet? Will Mars become a new branch of human civilization? As each subsequent Mars mission explores a wider and wider area of the planet over several years, an ideal site for a base will be found, probably one with a thermal vent that can supply water and power. At that point, several HABs will be landed in this one spot, with crews that plan to stay for four, eight, or even 12 years. The HABs will be interconnected, and a permanent human presence on Mars will be established. This scientific community will have to learn to become self-sufficient, to be able to survive on Mars without supplies constantly being sent from Earth. But unlike any other planet in the solar system besides Earth, Mars has all of the fundamentals needed to make this possible. Its 24-hour and 37-minute day is critical for growing plants. It has all of the elements necessary for creating building materials like plastics, metals and glass. And it has oceans of water frozen into the soil. If we can develop this craft of living on Mars, then Mars becomes inhabitable. Not immediately physically, but intellectually. I mean, look, what determines whether an environment is habitable or not? Is Colorado habitable? We're tropical animals. We're not naturally adapted to live in Colorado. No one could survive a single winter night here without technology, such as clothing, housing, efficient use of fire. We invented our way into becoming people that could colonize such hostile environments. Eventually, with a lot of ingenuity and invention, the scientists will learn to live off the land. They will grow crops in the iron-rich but potassium-poor soil. And they will produce oxygen and energy from the water and atmosphere. Sooner or later, children will be born, the first true Martians. They will grow up to see Mars as their home. With time, more and more people will arrive. These won't only be scientists, but settlers, people who plan to stay. They may come for all kinds of reasons, political, religious, economic. But to them, Mars will be a chance to start over, to build a new life for themselves. The well of human social thought is not exhausted by the present age, and I don't think will ever be exhausted. There will always be people with new ideas on how humans should live together. With Mars so far away, the hold of Earth governments on their colonies will be tenuous. The Martians will need to govern themselves. Mars is not going to be a utopia. Mars is going to be a lab. It's an open frontier. It's a place where things are going to be tried out. I think we'll see a lot of noble experiments on Mars. Perhaps some of these Martian colonies with their novel ideas based on the best thought the 21st century has to offer, maybe they'll find ways in which humans create society that are more humane and offer more opportunity for human potential. The ultimate dream of the Martians will be to terraform their planet, to make Mars as hospitable as Earth. This may not be as big a fantasy as it seems. Here we are on Earth, a world that's very sophisticated and developed and complete. And anything we do is just a subtraction. It's because we live in such a biologically rich planet. When we go to Mars, we have an opportunity that we don't have on Earth. Here's a planet that's died. Here's a world that's not full of biology, it probably doesn't have any at all. Well there, we can actually do something to help. Once there are large human settlements on Mars that would have significant industrial capability, we could actually start addressing ourselves to the question of transforming the Martian environment itself, terraforming Mars, as it's called, because Mars was once a warm and wet planet, and it could be made so again through human engineering efforts. With daytime temperatures in the Martian tropical zone averaging around zero degrees centigrade, 
and with an atmosphere only 1% as thick as Earth's, exposure to these elements by a human without a spacesuit would be instantly fatal. The first step to terraforming Mars and bringing it back to life will be for the Martian colonists to warm up their planet. Well, we know how to warm up planets. We're doing it on Earth by putting gases in the atmosphere. On Earth, it's not a good idea to warm up the planet. The temperature is just fine, thank you. We don't need it any warmer here. But in principle, if you could trap the sunlight reaching Mars today, every single photon that's hitting Mars, Mars would warm up in about 10 years. Well, obviously, you can't trap every single photon that's hitting Mars, but you can trap about 10% of them with the greenhouse effect. So that would imply that Mars could warm up in about 100 years. Well, 100 years is a long time, but it's not astronomically long. One idea is to build small, automated factories that produce super greenhouse gases with no ozone-depleting side effects. Although these gases would be unwelcome on Earth, for the Martians, they would be an efficient way to trap heat. Then within a few decades, we would raise Mars by more than 10 degrees centigrade. And if you did that, that would cause massive amounts of carbon dioxide that is currently absorbed into the Martian soil to start to outgas. Carbon dioxide is also a natural greenhouse gas. As it builds up in the atmosphere, more and more heat will be trapped, which will in turn cause more CO2 to outgas. The process will become automatic, and as the atmosphere thickens, Mars will eventually reach a state of equilibrium and stay warm naturally. The rise in air pressure would mean that the human colonists could discard their pressure suits and walk around the surface of Mars carrying only a supply of oxygen. And as the temperatures rise on Mars, water frozen into the soil will begin to melt out. And for the second time in its history, Mars would have liquid water on its surface. Dry Martian rivers will start to flow. Seas will rise. And there will be rain clouds in the skies. The return of Mars to its warm and wet stage will make it a fertile environment for life. Any indigenous Martian organisms lying dormant will begin to grow, and Mars will be full of Martians. If no native life emerges, or that life is all dead, then humans could begin addressing the idea of bringing life from Earth. At first, it would be simple organisms, perhaps genetically engineered, that would thrive in the Martian environment. Then more complex plants could be introduced. The plants would be right at home in the carbon dioxide atmosphere, and with no competition and a whole planet to cover, they could transform Mars into a green world. Warming Mars so that it sustains life is rapid, but then the slow process of making the atmosphere breathable for humans and animals starts, and that's done by plants. Although the process will happen naturally, if the colonists can't find a quicker way, it will take tens of thousands of years. This is a philosophical debate. Many people think the universe has a big sign on it that says, do not touch. Leave it alone, it was made this way, it is not in our purview as human beings to change anything. I can respect that view, although I disagree with it. I think the universe has a big sign on it that says, go forth and spread life. Because when I look around the universe, I think life is the most amazing thing we see. It is just incredible. And we human beings are uniquely positioned to help spread life from this little tiny planet, which it seems to have been started on, beyond. And that's our gift. Earth's gift to the universe, I think, is the gift of life.